Hi, everybody. Welcome to our channel, our Scientology stories, Peeling the Onion. My name is Mark Fisher, and uh, we have a very special show for you today and a very special guest. But first, I want to introduce my co-host, Janice Gillum Grady. Hi, Janice. How are you today? Good day, Mark. Good day, everyone. It's a good day. It's a sunny day here in Vegas. I think it was a 115 degrees this morning when I was out in the pool. But I got my relaxation in and I'm good to go. Fabulous. Janice, can you move your mic a little closer to you? Your microphone. Yeah, I'm, I'm right over it. Is that okay? okay? All right, cool. Anyway, uh, anybody, uh, we, we have the live chat open. So let us know where you're watching from. You know, what countries, what cities, anything like that while we get people in here. Uh, Goldie is in moderating our chat. If you have any questions, uh, we're going to do question and answer. So if you have a question, please write the word question in front of whatever the question is. So it's easy for us to spot in the chat and we can start and not miss it. All right. You're also welcome to super chat us and super sticker. Uh, if you want to donate to the channel, that's a great way to do so. Um, and we would appreciate any donations that uh, come that way. And we will get to your questions and answers. OK, we see people here from Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, let's see. How about Kansas. Clearwater, Brazil? We got South Africa in. Uh, greetings from the Netherlands. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Clearwater, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Bloomington, Indiana. We've got Sweden. Uh, Austin, Texas, Arizona, Central Arkansas. We're all over the world, Tasmania. and we just want to welcome everybody. <laughs> All right, before we get to our special guest, we have to start with our first feature here, Janice, all right? Oh, the other yep. thing I was going to mention too, Janice, we're going to do a giveaway too before we go to question and answers, right? And we're going to yes. give away one of your canvas bags, is that right? Yes, we are. The canvas bag. And it's got Janice's book on the front and the back. And we'll do that before we get to the questions and answers. And we see a lot of people coming into uh our video right now, our live stream, and we really appreciate your viewing. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to start off here uh, with our video with uh, onion peeling news this week. And <laughs> we've got our peeled onion over there on the right that was made by Bonnie, <laughs> right, Janice? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, so a lot of people were asking last week about, boy, Mark, you've got a lot of Hawaiian shirts, and I haven't repeated a Hawaiian shirt yet on any of our, our, uh, uh, videos yet and I collected them over the years and they said how long have you been uh, wearing Hawaiian shirts well I have proof here for you right now okay uh, this is Mark Fisher rocking the Hawaiian shirt since 1962 that's me on the left I'm four years old and that's in San Diego and the reason I know it's 1962 is because to my left my mother's holding my baby brother Doug who had just been born so I was four years old when that happened so that's when I know it started and then in the middle this photo, is before this, you even moved to hawaii what we didn't move to the middle one is when we moved to hawaii so san then, diego you started before you even yes, got to hawaii. started in san diego right and then uh, the middle one is uh when i was in hawaii these are school photos and then the one on the right also is in hawaii so i've i've worn hawaiian shirts most of my life and uh you know what it is it's, they're cool they're comfortable and you stand out in a crowd and that's the great thing about uh a Hawaiian shirt. So anyway, I wanted to share that with everybody that we do have proof of that. Okay. Right. Uh, the next slide is, uh, this is my baby Misha when she was two months old. Uh, everybody loves our dogs and she's the dog that you hear barking whenever it's on me and I've got to let her out. But uh, she's now three years old, but this is what she looked like when I first got her. She was two months old. And then this is me holding her. And then the picture of Janice holding Misha. She was such and a brought her to visit. Really cute and uh, just a sweet little girl. And uh, unfortunately, she's a little under the weather today. So hopefully she won't be doing any barking. But I, I'm hoping she'll feel better uh, by the end of the day. So anyway, so that's my dog, Misha. And then Janice, who's this? That is Moose. And he's got a bone in his mouth. And he was just looking so adorable. I, I had to snap the photo and show it to everyone. <laughs> he, he's a... He's 107 pounds. Wow. And he's just a big love. Very gentle soul. 
both of your dogs are. I was just over there last night and they just, they bark when you come in the door, but then as soon as they're done barking, all they want to do is get in your face and have you pet them. Yeah. Well, Rocky's more hyper where Moose is just, he's just calm about everything. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Okay. And then we also have something we want to announce uh, that happened two days ago. We hit 5,000 subscribers and that's, uh, we want to thank everybody who's subscribing to our channel. If you haven't already and you're a new viewer, just slam or what do you say? Slam the uh, mash or slam mash or slam that subscribe <laughs> button because we, we want to keep growing our channel. We've, uh, we've done this in about 10 weeks. We're at 5,000 subscribers. Uh, actually, the count today is 5,350. So, uh, but, so we're really proud of that, but we're, that's really due to you all watching and telling your friends and uh, catching our videos. So we want to thank everybody. We hit 5,000 subscribers. And the next goal is 10,000, of course. Another right. goal that we hit also this week is 100,000 views of our, of our YouTube videos in that same time period. We're actually at 100,507 views or something like that. And that also you know, shows that people are watching and liking our our channel from all over the world and again it's a it's a tribute to our viewers and we want to thank you for watching everything that we do right janice yes right mark <laughs> anything else you want to say about that yeah well i want to go back to the subject of the hawaiian shirts oh yeah because i have had some clothes left over from paul passing paul my husband passed away in december 2021 and I've slowly been going through all his stuff. And I have 12 Hawaiian shirts that I'm trying to find a good home for, not 12 Hawaiian, four Hawaiian shirts I'm trying to find a good home for. So if any viewers out there don't mind having secondhand shirts, I do have four Hawaiian shirts. What size? I'm trying to find a home for. What size? They're size large. Okay, so, so they're if large Hawaiian shirts. anyone is interested in having four or having one, just email me at JaniceGillumGrady at gmail.com and I will, email, I will mail them to you for whoever wants them. They're a size large. <laughs> but I want them to go, you know, be desired or used or whatever but i don't want to just put them in the trash or anything so i'd like them to go to a good home well that's very generous of you janice and i'm sure whoever gets them will appreciate uh their nice shirts you know i know i'm sure they'll appreciate them and okay. i have even more shirts if someone wants more shirts <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly okay anyway uh we want to thank uh, everybody for watching and uh, i'm going to introduce our our special guest okay and this is her right here. Our today's special guest is Karen de la Carriere. And uh, many of you know her. She was a highly trained class 12 uh, Scientology auditor in the Sea Organization. And uh, since then, she has been a, a prominent critic. And she's spoken out for years about the abuses in Scientology. And Janice, uh, anything else you want to say before I bring her on when I introduce her? Uh, you know, Karen and I have known each other since the early 70s. We were mates on the Apollo together. She also joined our family after my mother passed away. She married my stepfather, and I guess you'd say she became my step-stepmother. <laughs> but yeah, Karen is family, and we do have fun times together. So, All right, so without yeah, let's bring her on. Without further ado, here's Karen De La Carriere. Hi, Karen. Let me take this off. There she is. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Karen. Hi. Hi. How you doing today? Good. Doing real good. Doing real good. good Love to those see pictures you. of the dogs. Mm. <laughs> you know, I wanted to just jump in and give Janice a little tribute, a little acknowledgement. Uh -huh. There is no one in the world. Janny Grady is one of a kind. She has <laughs> connected up the ex-Scientologists, especially ex-Apollo, and formed a real solid community. Janice never gives up on you. She'll send you email whether you respond or not. When I was still in, Janice faithfully sent me a birthday and Christmas card. 
But shh, Janice had a living spy. Janice and Terry had a private investigator of the cult living with them. And apparently this guy accessed her email and saw that she had sent me a birthday card. Or Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was summoned to Osa in with, uh, with uh, a mandator in those days. <laughs> I, I obeyed. I obeyed. <laughs> and I was ordered to Osa in. A little bit in anxiety. And I was taken to a conference room. And the door burst open. And Mike Sutter, ooh, I wish I had a picture of him. Mike Sutter came down, came into the conference room. And he slammed the Whose side are you on? <laughs> Janice Grady or us? <laughs> I had just been gone. I was just out Karen, of Karen, we can't hear you. You're too far mm -hmm. from the mic. Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay. My slamming, go. I wanted to show how Mike Sutter slammed the conference table. How dare I be in touch with Janice Grady? How dare I? <laughs> he said, there's a sec checker waiting for you. You are to go see the cashier, pay, and get 12 and a half hours of sec checks on why you and Janice Grady are connected. Start. Wow. I didn't know this. You asked me for stories. Yeah. So, Jenny, your Christmas and birthday card cost me. It ended up, I bogged, and it ended up costing me like $25,000. Oh, wow. $25,000 because Janice oh. Grady spoke to me. That is the cult of Scientology. That shows they, I am powerful. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so my tribute is that Janice would send you a birthday card no matter what. And she always linked us all together. So thank you, Jenny. You're just you're, one of a kind. You're welcome. I enjoy staying in touch with everyone. The old Apollo crew are like family to me. You know, I was a yeah. teenager all those years and they were yeah. like uncles and aunts and older brothers or sisters. And and hi, Donna, you're included. Donna Tidman is in the chat. Uh, oh, okay. Jenkins. Okay, now. Go ahead, Karen. Janice Grady recruited me for the C organization. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Janice found, I went, I bought some hours as what they call an FCCI, flag case cuffs. I bought some hours just to have flag auditing. Mm -hmm. And Janice found me in the bowels of the, do you remember where it was on the Apollo? Yeah, I thought it was on B deck forward. Mm. Oh, you thinking you're in the tween decks? Mm. I don't remember. It was a sort of alcove. Yeah, I think it was outside the purser office on uh, uh, B deck forward. Okay. Do you, yeah. do you remember when that was? Early seventies. Three. Seventy-three. Yeah. So, 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 so Janice yeah. comes in and says, "The Commodore, when when a messenger came to you, it was usually a message from the boss." Mm -hmm. And she said, "The Commodore says, have you finished your FCCI FCCI auditing?" And have you signed your billion year contract yet? <laughs> so Hubbard yeah. invited me to join the Sea Org and sent Jenny. Yeah. To, make, to well, have me sign. Yeah, Karen, Karen was there as public, a pain yeah. public. And all she, yeah, she got audited and sat around, talked with the other uh, pain public. And, and somehow LRH spotted her. And, you know, he would see us in the folders too at that time, right? 
man. Yeah, so he knew who she was and that she was a trained auditor from St. Hill. I was and a class so, eight in those days, yeah. Yeah, class eight Mayor, auditor. Karen, when did you get in Scientology? Did you get in Scientology at St. Hill or where, where did you get in Scientology? London, 1970, London. Did okay. some, they had a little franchise there and I, they went to St. Hill. But, but, but I were, you know, in that mindset, Hubbard was like second only to God. Bigger than life, that, right? Yeah, yeah. But so, I, of course, Karen complied. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did. And it show, was the, can I show a photo here? Oh, okay. Okay. Here, here's the. This is the flagship Apollo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then the next. And, photo and wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. At the, yeah. If you look at this picture and look at the right. You'll see where there's that mask going up? Yes. Yeah. In the next picture, Karen is standing right next to that. Okay. This uh, uh, tell yes. Janice, say what this is, okay? Okay, this here, you'll see on the left, there's uh, L. Ron Hubbard Commodore. And then you see the arrow is pointing at Karen standing by the mast. And there she is. Yeah, I zoomed in. And this was one of the nights when the Commodore was putting on a show for all the crew and showing them the different photographs he'd been taking when he was ashore doing the photo shoots. Yeah, wow. and that's Karen's right there. Karen, what was it like on the on the ship when you were on the ship as a public person? Well, we had a special place to eat. It It, it was good. It was fun. It was... There was a camar camaraderie. We, uh -huh. Remember that we weren't apprised of the darker side, and we didn't know. I mean, I didn't even know that Jenny had been sort of confiscated from her mother, so to speak, uh -huh. without having a normal childhood. Janice and Terry, as youngsters, were just serving L. Ron Hubbard. I, I, I want to tell you that... <laughs> I had a very rude awakening. Whoa! One day I was had a cabin to myself. I was Apollo <laughs> Public. Once I was Sea Org, I was put <laughs> smelly. I had one rack. It were people. Oh you, my God! You moved to the woman's dorm. <laughs> yes, yes. No, not woman's dorm. No. They still treated. It was eight of us with Jeannie Kissinger. She was. Do you remember oh, her? There okay. was a woman's dorm for privileged, uh, you know. Yeah, that was and, probably down in the steward's quarters. That's where they had lesser amounts. But it was still smelly. Yes. You know, there, there, there was no air conditioning on the ship at all. And people perspired, only allowed 30 second showers. You couldn't really scrub yourself. So if you're dirty laundry and you're sweat and everything. So from a privileged cabin to a bunk. Right. You know? <laughs> and even my auditing, Leon Steinberg was my auditor. Like I was now, I was a Sea Org member. Hey, I would be fitted into a slot, even though I paid for it. I was Sea Org now. Right. Right. Yep. Oh, Jenny. Yep. Yeah. Now, did you ever have to do sea watches? Yes. And what did you do on sea watch? I was a trained. As, yeah, I was trained as a lookout. I I learned how to tie all those knots. It was complex. I don't know if I would still remember. There are some very complex knots that seamen learn. I did my able-bodied seamen right. check sheet and everything. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you that. I don't know if I'm jumping out of turn. I liked a guy called Pat Broker. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, when I say I liked, I audited him. I, I, yeah. I don't mean in any uh, second dynamic sense. I just want to, Jenny, I just want to reminisce on this guy who's been in hiding. Pat Broker, where up yeah. now? Where up now? I have a picture uh, from back in the Apollo days, okay? Yeah. That's and, him on the left, right? Yeah, that's Pat on the left. And in the middle there is Franny Broker, who later became Franny Friedman. She married Frankie Friedman. Yeah. 
And then she married Fred Harris. And yeah. last I saw her, she was uh, Franny Harris working at uh, Author Services, married to Fred. But then I later heard she was books exec int up at Gold. So I don't know what she is anymore. And then next to her is Louise Quirion, um, who was uh, one of the Commodore's aides along with Franny. That's uh, not Louise Schechter? Yes, huh? Louise Schechter. Louise Schechter? She's Louis known as Schechter. Louise Schechter. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but back to, so Pat was married to Franny and Pat and Franny had broken up. He had been, he had been in PAC in Los Angeles for a long time after Franny came to the ship. And the whole time LRH was in New York, Franny was on the ship and Pat was in Los Angeles or Boston. And when LRH came back and found out they'd been separated for over nine months, he immediately ordered Pat to the ship because Franny was shacking up with somebody else. Mm -hmm. So he ordered Pat to the ship and told them to try and get their marriage repaired. Well, after several months of trying to do that, it didn't work. So Pat found someone else and he needed to go get a divorce. So to get a divorce, he felt he had to go to Las Vegas and get a divorce there. So then Karen, you, you come along. <laughs> when you want to leave the ship for any reason at all, the instant thought is you're trying to blow and you have to prove you're already guilty of maybe having intentions. You have to prove with what they call security check, interrogatory questions. And you have to prove that you are not intending to blow. So Pat's folder was dunked on my rack and we went through all these questions. Are you secretly planning to leave the Apollo. Are you, have you made plans with anybody else? Have you talked to someone? About, I mean, it just went on and on. Pat was clean as a whistle. He had no intention of blowing. But I really tuned into his universe and I found him to be, wouldn't you agree, Jenny? A gentle, kind soul. Yes. The most, most certainly. Almost a dichotomy of Miscavige who took the reins. Yeah. Oh, God, one day we've got to talk about the whole coup. I know Mark knows, yeah. you know, there was a coup. But you just wonder if Pat took how Scientology would have rolled out with Pat Broker at the helm. And definitely different. Yeah, totally yeah. different. Anyway, now. Pat passed his sec check. He gave me a great thank you when he was he was allowed to go off the ship. And then. Well, let, let me intercept here. Yes. Because, well, Pat having to get divorced, it takes a while. And he was he went to Las Vegas. And I'm sure Pat was drinking up a storm and gambling a lot while there because once he got there, he found out he had to live there six weeks in order to qualify for a Las Vegas quickie divorce. Right. <laughs> so he now wanted to marry Trudy and Trudy's in a panic because his three week leave is up and Pat's not back. So then the pressure is on Karen as having been the set checker. Go ahead, Karen. When you're the last person on that confessional folder and the person vanishes the finger is pointed at you 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 miss the withhold you go to the rpf no but here's what happened pat is lollygagging in las vegas as janice explained and guess what happens the apollo gets stoned in function <laughs> and there's this rock concert of this is explosion where the natives are chanting CIA CIA which was so ridiculous we just shook our heads in disbelief I was actually it was a lib stay port or starboard I was yeah. off with Monica Pignati on on the island 
And so the, was I. Oh, it, you remember then? It was a oh, yeah. day off. It was a day yeah. off. In those days, you get get a day off every two weeks. Yeah. So, um, so the ship pulls. We, we take a, a smaller boat to the ship, and Hubbard decides overnight, we're leaving. We're leaving the Mediterranean. And we crossed the Atlantic in total darkness. They didn't allow any lights on on the Apollo. We crept out and we crossed the Atlantic. Now, Pat Broker can't get back <laughs> to Madeira. The ship isn't even around. And he doesn't he, know where it is. <laughs> exactly. And now we're in the Caribbean. And then we don't land. That's a whole other story, Janice. Love to tell yeah, you. Yeah, I'll about. cover that another time. Also, my punishment for just mentioning when everyone was bonded, no one was allowed to tell anyone we were going to the USA. But everyone, there's a huge story there, Jenny. But anyway, now I'm in panic mode. We're in the Caribbean, a couple of weeks, no pad broker. And Jeff Walker. <laughs> I love Jeff towards the end. I really, I really love Jeff. But Jeff Walker snarled at me. There he is right there. Yeah. Intern <laughs> soup, my intern soup. He came right up to me and said, Pat Broker has not returned after your sick check. You didn't say anything more, no threat. But I knew what that meant. And I was biting my fingernails, come on back. Because if Pat had blown and I had specifically asked those questions. Are you intending to flee? Blow in the Sea Org means getting out of there, escaping. It's just another word for escape. But without permission, you hadn't, the checklist hadn't been signed. So I was just biting my nails. Eventually, Pat got hold of after his did what he did in Vegas, got this divorce, whatever. And in those days, they called CLO Folo. And Folo knew where the ship was. And eventually, Pat came back. You won't believe I felt <laughs> the relief I felt, the mountain of heaviness sitting on my back vanished. <laughs> well, but Jenny, don't you think Pat was a super cool, nice person? Yeah, he was. I do. I, he and I and Alan Voss, I think that's yes. the next picture. Yeah. Yeah, this one um, here. Yeah. Well, well, Pat there was getting married to Trudy, but before he started dating Trudy, Pat and I and Alan, who's also there, and a bunch of other people, in Madeira, we used to go up to the Sheridan Hotel and just hang out at the swimming pool and pretend we were we were guests at the hotel. That's really cool. Alan has now Alan is the redhead on the right side. Yes. Uh -huh. Pat Pat is the little bit shorter one. That's Pat yeah. Morgan. Now that's was, that's how he mates. Yeah. That's how he looked like when I when I was auditing him. The younger yeah. Pat Broker. Of course you could see the Pat Broker face in the later images, right? You have some yes. later images, Mark? Yeah, well, there's Which one point? more. This is him with his new wife, Trudy, at that time. That's Pat and Trudy after they got married. Because mm -hmm. I remember Trudy in a panic when Pat wasn't back and, you know, and then finally it was like, well, he has to be in Vegas six weeks and then she calmed down. But yeah, they got married in November 74 in uh, NASA in the Bahamas. Because it was the double wedding with my sister. I so, showed some photos yeah. of that uh, few in one of the messenger uh, videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pat and Trudy. Well, Miscavige, David Miscavige was paranoid, paranoid about Pat Broker. And he paid two private investigators. $12 million over a period of 20 years to stalk and follow. Oh, th these two 
private investigators were ex ex cops, ex police yes. officers. I have a photograph of them. This is them right here. That's them. That's them. And they had every phone record of Pat Broker. They went through his his, uh, his waste bins, his trash. They talked to all his neighbors. I, there's no data whether Pat knew he was being followed and stalked. But listen, parishna money that is extorted out of the public, extorted cash, $12 million goes to ex-police officers to stalk a former Sea Org member right. because David Miscavige has paranoia, paranoia on Pat possibly coming back because there was this issue that Pat and Annie were to take over the helms of the Sea Organization. Yeah, and right. these, these two guys, just so you know, they followed him not not just from in the United States, but apparently Pat Broker moved over to Europe, I think Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic. Yes. And these yes. guys these guys went there too. Yes, absolutely. And they would they would find locate, you know, residences right next to Pat and listen and eavesdrop and and they they followed him for a long time. And the only reason that we know about them is because Scientology owed them money and didn't pay them. So then they came out and then they got interviewed by the Tampa Bay Times, and then uh, they actually sued Scientology to get paid the money that they were owed. They were they were lopped off because after twenty years they weren't producing. Pat was not some evil guy. He was not going to places like the Bunny Ranch in Las Vegas. He wasn't doing, you know, growing marijuana and selling. He wasn't doing anything that right. in those days could have got him in trouble. He was clean. Yeah, so I think after, he was going to vet school to become a vet. Yes, horse equinine. A uh, veterinarian. Yes. yes, he loved horses. So, um, yeah. So, Pat, Pat Broker, <laughs> where art thou? Come back. <laughs> you know, Get in touch with Jenny. So, Pat, Pat, there's a lot of people that do love you. And I don't know if you know by now or not, but you were stopped by these two PIs for 20 years. And finally, these two ended up with Ray Jeffrey and the church settled, settled quickly, wanted them muzzled and gagged so they could never talk to us. These two guys here. These two yeah. ex-cops got a nice settlement to shut up. Yeah. Not talk to anyone. Yeah. And to be honest with you, Karen, I don't know if you know this, but according to Marty, when he came out, these two guys were the precursor to the private investigators that were sicked on Janice and me and our group mm -hmm. here in Las Vegas, yes. because Miscavige was so thrilled with the information he was getting from these PIs about Pat Broker. He wanted to know what we were up to in Las Vegas. And that's why David LeBeau was was uh, sicked on us and uh, we're going to do a video on that on the future too but uh, right. yeah no it's just a crazy they use uh, they use tax exempt money this is money that uh, you know taxpayers are basically subsidizing this type of activity and this is this is a, a not a church activity you wouldn't find I don't think a Catholic church or a Baptist church or you know doing the same thing it's just nuts yeah <laughs> Very much There's so. Someone just comments they pay them off with paintings. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got uh, the other part of it too. Jay, I don't know if you heard, uh, Karen, uh, we just got recently, just this last week, Mark Headley sent us the OSA files that Mike Rinder, I guess, took with him when he left uh, that had our names in them. And this is from 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. And I was proud to find out that my code name at OSA and with David Miscavige is MOFO. So I'm a bad <laughs> MOFO. They don't, they don't want to mess with me. <laughs> well, and you know what I thought was funny is I went through the documents Mark sent me and in there was a tape transcript of LRH talking to Lois Riesdorf and Gail Irwin. And this, this was a talk he did in January of 1980, going over the international stats. Hmm. And the reason my name, came, why they sent, sent it to me as in my file is because in there, 
they bring up staff pay and Gail says to LRH, well, Janice just got back from leave. Hmm. And that's the only thing it says on me. And here it was mixed in with files from 2006. Hmm. So you're hmm. talking 26 years later. So I'm reading through this whole transcript, trying to figure out, well, why would they have me in there? Or, you know, have it with my files? Well, it was because of that. But I noticed what nobody else would have would have really seen. And that's where LRH makes a comment about Dave Misk. Mm. David Miscavige was referred to sometimes as Misk or Dave Misk. And in there, LRH is looking at the Sea Org stats, and Dave at the time was watchdog committee member for Sea Org. And there was some trouble there on the Sea Org uh, book sales. And LRH comments, Dave Misk has some out ethics going on. Mm. And says someone needs to find out what his out ethics mm. is. And it's sitting there writing these files, and Oser is totally missing this and obviously not knowing who Dave Misk is. 26 years later, <laughs> I just thought that was something I wanted to comment on. Very, what a nice anecdote. You know, yeah. Karen, the funny thing about these files from 25, 2005, 2006 is I'm sure you remember um, a, a ex an ex Sea Org message board was set up on Yahoo yes. okay, by a friend of ours, Mick Wenlock. And yeah. a bunch of us, you know, joined. It was a private group. It was a message board private on Yahoo. And they got their neck twisted, Scientology and OSA, over this. The fact that we were all posting and getting reconnected. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. public enemy number one was me and two yeah. other people. And so yeah. they, they decided they were going to try and destroy us over just commenting in a private chat group. It was so funny when you read these things. And, you know, I, I it, it just goes to show that OSA is basically following everything. Because the other thing Janice and I talked about as well, they have all sorts of information. They knew who Janice, who was going to be at your birthday, right? Yeah, they knew who was coming to my birthday. They knew who was invited and said they weren't coming. Yeah. I'm like, how would they yeah. even know this? This was for my 50th birthday. Yeah. But yeah. somehow they knew. I want the public to know that Scientology has a huge spy division. Scientology has, following a trait that Hubbard had, paranoia. And nothing gives them more of a mental breakdown than us all hooking up together. And now there's God yeah. knows how many. There are secret chat rooms and groups on Facebook yeah. they have no access to. There's more public ones like mine. Well, mine is probably out of banks, but we don't even care if we're infiltrated. They right. are toothless, right. they are impotent, and their public <laughs> relations is in a free fall. We've Just got a comment here. Amy mm -hmm. Scobie's in the house, and she said Dave Misk is still out ethics. <laughs> so <laughs> true. <laughs> But Karen, Hi, Amy. Nice to see you. <laughs> but Karen, and Amy was there too, but do you remember the first big event I put on? We had maybe about 100 people come to Vegas. Yeah. It was my sister's 60th and my dad's 87th or something birthdays. And I remember we were all coming down to go to the ballroom for the, for the dinner. And Mark Headley was there. And he's, man, he can spot a PI yeah. from a mile away. Yeah. And there's the PI sitting right outside the door with some sort of camera and pen camera in his pocket. And oh boy, Mark was right onto him and scared this, followed him all the way out of the casino. They seem to have let up somewhat on this. In the first few years I was out, they would send people to my gate, to my home. It was an intimidation thing, right? And they said, we've come here to interview Karen de la Carriere for Freedom Magazine. And so I put up security cameras. Ooh, I have state-of-the-art security cameras. Anyone comes and rings my doorbell, <laughs> we have the footage. And, you know, a funny little thing. They know I do bird rescue. I got a passion for that. 
And I'm known in the Los Angeles area. People drop me off all kinds of birds or I network and send them like seagulls and pelicans. I, I can't handle water birds. They go to the one in San Pedro and so on. So this girl comes to my door, rings the bell and Jeffrey goes to the gate and she said, oh, I have a bird for Karen. And she, she said, I, I really need to talk to Karen. And Jeffrey knew there was something. People don't arrive and say, I really need to talk to Karen. They just, they want to, they want the bird handled, right? Right. <laughs> so Jeffrey said, the bird is not available. And this is all on camera, on footage. So she says, I want Karen to know that things are different. It's not what she thinks. It's a whole different scene in. In 10 minutes, we had the video up on my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> they stopped. That was the end of them coming to the gate. Right. They thought, we are giving her footage for her channel. Yes. And other than the hate pages they make, they make, that's, that's about their only way they hit back. Hate pages. I got, I was so moved to get a call from Mitch Brisker. Yeah. And he said, Karen, Karen, I want to apologize that I contributed to making hate propaganda videos on you. I can't tell you what a nice gesture that was. I'll bet. He was there. He was making the propaganda hate videos. And he calls me up to apologize. Thank you, Mitch Brisker. Thank yeah. you. Well yeah, received. Mitch was a good guy. Yeah, we just did, we just did two interviews with him in the last week. Yes, and he was highly successful. Yes. And yeah. uh, you know, he's still dealing with you know his feelings and uh, you know his viewpoints on different things. But he's a very articulate. He's very smart, and uh, we really appreciated his insight. And he has a lot of current information. We're going to talk to him uh, some more because there's more stuff that he has knows about currently. Uh, things like things like Miscavige and and all sorts of things where it's it's pretty wild. Well, you you guys did the leaking of even Aaron did a quick video on it on the Marty yeah. on Marty's back says yeah. David Miscavige. Yeah. So, Mitch Brisker, wealth wealth of information. Jenny, the, you nudged me to tell you a little Apollo story yeah and i'll just go ahead and throw it in and then we should probably move on to question and answer time. yeah okay yeah let's yeah this is the last, great story. last little story great story well here. they needed to send me on mission and the way the co works it it likes to send you to the country on which you have a passport so if you're south african you'll be sent on mission because you'll go straight through because there's no visa problem, nothing. You're a citizen of that country. So they wanted to send me to England. There was a couple of heavy duty situations, but my passport was not, the dates of it didn't work. I could be on mission and anyway, the passport was running out. And the problem was the Apollo was already in the Caribbean but these banana islands, <laughs> Aruba, Curacao, Bonnet, they, they didn't have British embassies to give you a passport. Uh, it just wasn't working, right? So finally, the port captain, Philip Parks, rushed to me and said, look at the, we would get in our in-basket the next few ports and the dates we were visiting. Everybody got that on it. In. So you knew where you were going, right, Jenny? Yes. And Jamaica came up. And Jamaica used to be a British colony and so on. And it did have an embassy or what they call a British High Commission and right. that issued passport. So Philip Parks gave me a bunch of money and said, don't, don't. Don't say anything about the Apollo. Don't, don't get into, just get your passport in and out. So I arrive at the British High Commission and it's empty. There's nothing going on. I, I mentioned that because they charged me a rush fee when they had no rush. They had no business. Nobody was there. 
they they so and you know they 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 asked me about the apollo they, oh, they knew did. and they stamped my passport apollo crew <laughs> they did not they were well informed yes about the apollo well informed well and, that's why we're not supposed to go to embassies where the ship it was yeah exactly well you know i had to talk they said we're only going to give you a temporary 30-day pa 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 passport i said that's fine i'll be in london petticoat lane just the passport office right there just off petticoat lane once i was in london i could get so i had two people really acting like they were fbi or something really like well what exactly do you do on the apollo you're obviously not carrying cargo and you're not tourists because you never go ashore and i was i couldn't get out of there fast enough i was just I wasn't truly prepared to give the OTC shore story. Right. Anyway, I got this 30 day passport, got a taxi, but they had kept me there long. And I think they were calling the home office and they were calling whoever they were called. They just kept me there. And then they charged me a rush fee when there was no line. There was no rush. There, were, there was no, thank God. Philip Parks knew their tactics because he gave me a real bunch of money to, to pay for all this. So I got this 30 day passport. Now we come to the crux of the story. Rush back in a taxi. Apollo is gone. There's no ship. <laughs> it's just the, the most extraordinary feeling when all your life belongings are in a location and your job and your friends and it's vanished and i'm on this banana island of jamaica with little money left over from the passport money but no one i couldn't believe it i just kept staring and i thought ah oh, ah oh, i know it must be on a sea trial just <laughs> i mean i was just you know, you, you make up things when you don't understand. You fill the vacuum. Perhaps it's just circling. And I waited and waited on a sea trial. So there I was with no, with very little money. And there were no cell phones in those days. No. Nothing. So then I finally thought, I'll go see the harbor master. My now it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. So I went to the harbor master and said, do you know where the Apollo is going? Do you know when it left? See, that British embassy, it kept me there so long. Now, Hubbard always had lung problems. And you know, he never stopped smoking. Those cool cigarettes had to be in every ogle. He just, the messengers had to carry. He smoked yep. like a chimney in spite of his lung problem and the way the apollo was parked it was just opposite some kind of factory belching out poisonous fumes which hubbard couldn't hubbard could not stand any poisonous fumes coming his way i mean it wasn't healthy for anyone right but hubbard ordered as soon as these fumes hit, whether he came out on prom deck or what, immediate departure. So it left. But the why it left was the poisonous belching fumes from the Jamaican chemical factory. So how did you get back to the ship? Oh, Mark, it was... <laughs> I slowly i just kept standing on the dock looking out waiting for the apollo and slowly one or two others who were also trapped kept came back on the dock 
I think Jerry Armstrong was, he was the purchaser, wasn't he, at one point? He, were, he was the ship's representative. Right. Well, I know the purchaser, I remember, but I can't, I can't even, I was so charged up. But you know, you know, sometimes you get a song swirling in your mind, like it's, it's, it's running in the background. Yes. And I kept getting that Rolling Stone song, you're 2,000 light years from home. <laughs> Do you remember that one? It just kept talking about being absolutely lost in space. Anyway, a person came and another person came. And finally, there were like four of us. Right. And we had enough money for a hotel. Meanwhile, Philip Parks and the others, because you log out the QMAS, the QM knows who's on the ship and who's off the ship. The ship realized that we were gone and that, that they were gone and we were ashore. And through jo John Bond got involved. <laughs> John oh, he, Bond. Well, he worked in the external communications office. And they, um, boy, they, had to call every hotel to find out and then they hooked that <clears throat> that was and a, a sort of larger than a ferry boat was it, it the ship never goes that far it goes port no. to port to port so we were shipped back and that was so to go get a passport i was gone two <laughs> two, two and a half days <laughs> yeah that was that was so it. you were downstairs that week. Yes, I was. And I was penalized. And right. I was penalized. And I was penalized that the Apollo was stamped on my passport. passport. Yeah, having Apollo in your passport was, oh, it was like the worst thing that could happen to you. Because then you, you couldn't use your passport. People went and got new passports because of it. Because yeah. then trying to go into England or different places, you got pulled aside and, and interrogated. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Okay, are we ready to do a giveaway before we go to questions, Janice? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. So uh, we're going to do a giveaway here, Karen. Uh, basically, j everybody jump in the chat if you want to win. This is a canvas bag with Janice's books on either side of the bag. You can use it. Uh, the uh, Jen, who won it the last time, she said she was taking it with her to the beach this weekend. She got it in the mail. So if you're interested in winning the bag, go ahead and get in the chat and say bag me or I want the bag or win or whatever. Me, me, me. Doesn't matter. But we're going to do a countdown and uh, and then we'll just randomly select somebody to win that bag. And then uh, Janice will uh, um, get will get your information and then we'll send it out to you. Right, Janice? Yes. Right, Mark. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to give you Mark, a second I can't here see the chat. The chat is in. Yeah. Mark, the chat is invisible to me. Is there some button you can click to let me see the chat? No, unfortunately, we, oh, we, okay. we don't have a way of doing Fair that. Enough. But anyway, okay. uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, do a countdown here. We're going to give it a second. There's a little bit of delay, but go ahead and get in that chat, uh, you know, bag me, whatever, and I'll do a countdown from five, and then I'm just going to randomly pick one, okay? Everybody ready here? Okay, so we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. And we got Beachcomber. Beachcomber, you win the bag, and it's going to be perfect for beachcombing, right, Janice? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> perfect for the beach. <laughs> so, Beachcomber, what you need to do is just uh, you can email Janice. Right there at Janice Gillum Grady at gmail.com. Send her your contact information and your address so that she knows where to mail it to you and she'll ship it off to you right away. And uh, we want to congratulate you for winning and thank everybody else for participating and uh, in, in the chat giveaway. So uh, we're going to go to question and answers now. And uh, what we want to do is in the comments, okay, if you've got a question, again, please write the word question in front of the comment. And uh, that way it's easy for us to spot and we won't miss it. You're also welcome to super chat us. 
which is a way of donating to our channel or super sticker us either way. And there's also super thanks that you can do as well. Anyway, uh, we appreciate the uh, donations. It helps us create more videos and uh, give you better content and get the word out. So if you're interested in doing that, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, super chat away, but we will answer all questions. It doesn't matter if you super chat or not, we're going to answer your questions. Okay. Are you guys ready? We're going to start ahead. Janice, you'll, you'll start the stuff, right? And, uh, uh, I'll yes. I'll start yeah. starring questions. You've got a okay. bunch already to start with. All right. So we'll go with the first, this is a super chat from Juliana Betancourt. And uh, the only type of onion I enjoy peeling is SP. <laughs> Thank you very much, Juliana. Uh, I was pleased to be on with her and Clearwater Chad's uh, Micathon or Chatathon uh, last Monday. And Juliana was part of that. And they do a great job. They're, they're never ends. They've never been in Scientology. And they're uh, dedicated watchers of the, all the channels. So we really appreciate that, Julianne. And uh, we'll go to the next question or comment. Uh, Jeanette X, question. Can you confirm that Ron almost never answered the letters sent to him and that some Sea Org member answered posing as Ron and that Suzette Hubbard later was in charge of the unit? Janice? What's this? Can you confirm that Ron almost never answered the letter sent to him? The SO one line. Yes, the SO one line. You know, we're gonna do a whole thing on that with Ken Urquhart. And um, but yeah, there's a lot of letters that did not be were not seen by him that were answered by staff. And that actually started at a certain point. So we'll we'll go into a whole subject of that and cover how it was done and who answered it and so forth. Okay, was Suzette ever in charge of the unit? Not you know, that I remember her. No, she was in uh, ABC. Okay. So she might have had to authorize some of the letters where the unit, the people typed up answers and then Suzette would have had to approve those proposed answers. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, and we'll we'll get back to you on that. Karen, I was going to ask you real quick. Um, do you remember the first time you met L. Ron Hubbard? Was it at St. Hill or was it on the ship? No, on the ship, on the ship. And what was it like when you met him? And how? What was the occurrence? What happened? Um, well, many people have said this before. He was sort of larger than life. He had a lot uh -huh. of charisma. He was beaming and smiling. And we walked, it was, you know, in those days, we really had a kind of shock and awe to be in his presence. Janice had him all day long for hours, every day, every day, every year. So she didn't have that, that thing, but he was very friendly uh -huh. and he had a lot of presence. That means he was here in the now. He he had his tirades and screaming fits and Jenny has described some of them in her books you know he had his temper tantrums and everything but he could also be incredibly social and likable he was not uh, you were not in fear you 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 hear the ex community talk about being in fear of david miscavige arriving yeah. while they're waiting for him in the country, they're actually quaking. There was no fear whatsoever to meet Hubbard. You were, you felt great. You felt, wow, here's the Karen, you were, you were highly trained as an auditor. Did he ever compliment you on your, your auditing ability? And, and your, you know, was he, you know, I know he did case supervising, but did you ever get complimented on your, on your ability as an auditor? I wasn't just a class 12 auditor. I was a class 12 case supervisor that's a whole realm even above the mm -hmm. audit because you're managing the cases i will tell you that in all the time in all the auditing i did on the apollo i never got busted i never got i hubbard personally commended me 12 times in 12 different issues blue on blue and this and that and um, I won an autographed blue e-meter from him for being the top gun. <laughs> uh, 
I no longer have it all. That stuff is gone. But um, yeah, he when Hubbard commended you in the Oods, the Oods was a daily. Uh, nowadays we we send out email for everyone to read. Oods means orders of the day. Right. And if Hubbard commended you in the Oods, your ethics file was cleared. <laughs> Didn't matter who wrote anything on you, right, Jenny? Pretty much. <laughs> My ethics file got cleared. Not not that I had a huge amount in it, but yes, Hubbard commended me several times publicly, not publicly. Yeah. I had Twelve different commendations from him. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much for that uh, answer. Here's another question. This is from Jay Warren. What was uh, Pat Broker like as a man? Was he not like DM at all? Correct. A complete dichotomy of DM. Jenny? Yeah, they, you know, they were they were very good friends originally. Yeah. Through the earlier years, they were very good friends, and then they became even better friends when Pat would come down from being with LRH and meet DM for mail drops. Right. They became very good friends and went out ethics together. You know, a lot of drinking and other stuff going on in Vegas. Pat tends to have a, a liking for Las Vegas. But um, yeah, they, um, as a, now he says, what was he like as a man? Was he not like DM at all? No, you know what? Pat was a very courteous person. He was very warm. Very warm and friendly. You know, when my when my dog had puppies, she had 12 puppies, and I'm like on sealed pay. I'm now going to get um, vet vaccinations for all 12 puppies. Pat goes, hey, I used to train as a vet. I know how to, to give them their shots. So one day we went off together, look, going around looking for where we could get wholesale pricing for, for dog vaccinations. And we got them and we went back and Pat vaccinated each of the little puppies for me. But, you know, he, just, he would go out of his way to help if he knew how to do it. Okay, great. Thanks very much for that question, Jay. We'll go to the next. I think this is a comment here. I uh, love Food Kitchen. Mofo and Janny, peel the onion. Sounds like such a hit TV show. Yeah, we should be on Netflix, Janice. <laughs> right. So Karen, you always call me Janny. Nobody else really knew of that except for, you know, family and messengers would call me Jan or Janny. And because that was what my mom always called me growing up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thanks and for now that. The Good secret's time. out. <laughs> Another comment here. This is from Jay Warren. I'm known to wear the occasional Hawaiian shirt as well, Mark. Absolutely. You got to rock that Hawaiian shirt. You know, they're comfy and colorful. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. And then we got another question. Oh, sorry. Wrong one That's here one. from Jay Warren. Uh, is it true L. Ron Hubbard gave an order that Pat and Annie would succeed him as the loyal officers? That is for discussion in another video. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's a lot to that story. And uh, we want to do a full video on it because it's very in depth. And uh, yes. the whole takeover by Miscavige of uh, Scientology, the Religious Technology Center and all that, mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a long video, but uh, it, it'll be interesting. We've got a lot of information on it. Thanks, right. Jay. Well, right. I want to just jump in a really quick sure. here. We were all told when uh, uh, at the end of the week you went to pick up your pay Saturdays. Pay was like fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. I mean, pay on the Apollo was like twelve dollars. Anyway, when we went to pick up our pay, we were told Pat Broker's birthday is coming up. Fifteen dollars has been taken out of your pay to give him lessons. He wants to learn to be a pilot. He wants pilot lessons. So you're not asked, do you want to contribute to the birthday? You just, the money's taken. So JM, this is especially for you. The $15 was gone for Pat. And we were happy to contribute to his birthday. Two weeks later, staff master, we were told this is, what is it, 80, 86, 87? We were told, 
you're getting back your fifteen dollars. Pat will not be getting pilot lessons. <gasps> what happened? Stay tuned. Janice and Mark will have a forthcoming video on what happened. Yeah, I, right. I remember that. Hey, thanks, Jay. That's a great question. All right, next one. Oh, Scientology Money Project, Jeffrey Augustine. Hi. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Jeffrey. I really love your special guest, Karen. Can you get oh. me her phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you later, Jeffrey. <laughs> Why don't you explain, Janice, who, who this That's Jeffrey Karen's significant other, right? What? <laughs> That's Karen's, That's Karen's husband. Other who is uh, wanting Karen's phone number so he can take her out on a hot date. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, Jeffrey. We appreciate it. We'll go to the next question here from Love Sherlock. Question, where was Karen raised? She has an accent. How did she have the money to pay that 25000 et cetera, for the sec checking that you got? I'm a global art dealer. A Thomas Kincaid art dealer. Well, the, I didn't have the 25000 all on credit card. And then you have to pay and pay and pay. When you're suddenly... A lot of people don't have $25,000 um, just sitting around to give. <laughs> Do you have $25,000 on the spot? You put it on credit card. I was born in India and I was raised mostly in London. So You're born in India. I didn't know that. Yes, That's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Calcutta. I'm bilingual. I speak French and English. Um, and I try to I try to not have whatever accent is a blend of <laughs> a blend of French, American, British. It's a, it's a blend. Many people try to copy it and can't. Karen, and I've known you for over 40 years. I never knew that. I always assumed you were from France. Mm, I used to deliver L's in French. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm sort of You're French multilingual. Yeah. Uh -huh. So someone's asking, is that when India was under British rule? When you were born? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. your mother was British, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Welsh. French? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fabulous. Okay, thanks for that question. Next question here we got from Love Who Kitchen. Uh, question. Oh, was Follow the former name for the CLO? Yes. There was a Follow in a former convent in Rotting, Rotting, 45 minutes drive from St. Hill, and no one seems to know why it was there as there's no Church of Scientology nearby. Is that correct, Janice? There was a Follow in former convent in Rotting, Dane, 45 minute drive from St. Hill. I don't know because I never in my during my Sea Org years I was never in England. Okay. So I don't know where it was. You know that rings a bell. They did buy a property there, forty-five Didn't minutes they? away, and it was a former convent. Whether they then refurbished it or whether they just dumped it or whatever, but they did buy a former convent. You're a hundred percent right. I remember reading that very well. You know, now I'm thinking of it, I, I vaguely remember that too, but mo then it was moved back to St. Hill. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks very much for that question. We've got a comment from Lofu Kitchen. Is Mofo's Osophile just a constant record of what Hawaiian shirt has been wearing from day one to the next? Tuesday, ugly pink flowers. Wednesday, fancy green leaves and red flowers. Thursday, blue waves. <laughs> that's funny no I, it doesn't have anything to do with that we actually know who provided the information it was another spy that Scientology uh, in, uh, planted in our universe here in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and the guy was my personal friend for almost 10 years uh, mm -hmm. I talked to him almost every day mm -hmm. and uh, he was he was a paid Scientology spy mm -hmm. and uh, he was finally outed when uh, the Truth Rundown came out in 2009 uh, when Marty Rathbun uh, told told me that there was a guy who uh, they had, and then I went, that's my friend. His name was Ferris Khan. I said, that's my friend Ferris, and I was shocked. So that's when I actually spoke out to the uh, Tampa Bay Times and told them that story, and then he was out of my life at that point. 
Okay. You know, well, go ahead. No, no. I think spy stories are very, very interesting and absolutely just a really good theme. Genesis, the Genesis. Both you and Genesis have the ultimate spy stories. Those, those would make great shows. Yeah, we, we should, we should do a show on spy stories. <laughs> yep, spy stories. We'll get Headley on. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Next question here we got from Lori Pick uh, Pitchy. Pichika, question, Karen, how did you meet Jeffrey and how long after Scientology? Uh, a couple of years after I had departed, I was reading a lot of the sites and there was a great site called Operation Clambake. And Jeffrey was writing under the pen name of J. Swift. And I really loved his writing. Anyway, long story short, uh, we met and uh, did I answer your question? For a long time, yeah. Yeah, that and was Jeffrey's about awesome. twelve. He's an about, awesome dude. Yeah. Yeah, it was about ten, eleven years ago, but we kind of in we kind of knew each other before that. But anyway, we are uh, we are a very uh, Jeffrey is my beloved, and I'm really blessed at my old age. I'm a lot older than <laughs> I bet I'm the oldest person, including everybody on the charts. <laughs> to be at my age blessed with such a great uh, love of my life is is, is precious. It's, yeah. it's really, he's That's a treasure. That's great, Karen. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey. I've seen you guys together. You're a great couple, and Jeffrey is so reliable, and so he's always there. He's on it. Yes. He, he's also one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. He, he, um, for not really having been in Scientology, he understands yeah. everything. He can ask you a question about something technical or a policy letter, and he understands. I've been interviewed him by him two or three times. And it's always a pleasure because he understands exactly what you're talking about. And his Scientology Money Project, if you guys haven't gone to his uh, his site or his channel, definitely do so because you will get some fantastic information there. So that's that's our. You know, you know, I want to just ch chime in and say something that. Yeah. There's some kind of attitude that certain people have that never ends up. They don't count at all, and. Blah, Rubbish. Graham Berry is the lawyer of 30 years that takes on every case. He's in a league of his own. He's a never in. Yes. Jeffrey, actually, it's wrong to say he was never in. He got a lot of sex checks and he got basic. Um, there was an Israeli guy called Rafi who sat him down at L.A. Day and said, you know, you, you're you're in danger. You're 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 in danger. Time is not kind on the reactive mind. And Jeffrey said, "What's the reactive mind?" <laughs> he wanted twelve thousand dollars for life repair, and Jeffrey said, "You know what? I'm I'm not twelve thousand dollars fucked up. I may be five hundred dollars <laughs> fucked up. I'll give you five hundred bucks." <laughs> And Jeffrey did have basic <laughs> LA Day, Los Angeles Day, introductory auditing plus some sex checks. So yeah. it wasn't really like a thing. Anyway, he, Jeffrey comes from a background of being a, a Pentecostal. Pentecostal is a real offshoot of Christianity where have you seen the holy rollers? They talk in tongues. Yeah. They roll on the floor and they yeah. babble. The Scientology viewpoint is, see, they're talking out of an imp That's an implant dramatization. Uh -huh. But Jeffrey was very, very much indoctrinated. And his empathy for Scientology is because he came out of holy rollers and <laughs> Pentecostal. And he understood how a cult can... In Doctrinate deeply into your head. Yeah. So he started his whole journey of learning everything about it and being a critic. 15 years before I came out, Jeffrey had studied every nook and cranny of Scientology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you, Lori, for that question. We've got a super chat here from Love Sherlock. Thank you so much, Love Sherlock, for that super chat. Enjoying watching you both and love that you have guests like Karen on with you. We love it, too. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Love Sherlock. Yeah, thank you, Love Sherlock. We appreciate that. Let's go to the next question here. Hold on a sec here. Here we go. Uh, Kolahawak uh, Revis, I always butcher that name. I don't know how to pronounce that, but anyway, sorry about that. Question, what is the difference between a class 12 and a class 12 case supervisor in terms of the amount of study and know-how? Every single level has to be done from the viewpoint of case supervising that level. So every, every single level you study a check sheet on how to manage that case, and then you have to do an internship at every level to, <laughs> to like redoing it all, but from the viewpoint of others to others. An auditor is counseling a thing, and you've got to see that Hubbard was applied 100%. Okay. This is all, okay. you know, I've moved on. I understand. Yes. Scientology have some kind of racket where they say, oh, she's auditing. They're not a single PC. There's no evidence. There's no nothing. But Scientology have a kind of, they can't find a lot of evidence of misconduct. I'm a global art dealer. 7,000 positive feedbacks on eBay, 100% positive on Amazon. Not a single complaint of any client, any time, any place. So they can't really find dirt on me. So the way to depopularize me is to tell the world, she's auditing. Where? To who? Give evidence. Rumor mongering. Bullshit. Take, yeah. your, take, your, <laughs> take your innuendo and rubbish and throw it in the Milky Way. <laughs> Makes me angry. <laughs> well, we know they make up lies. Oh. Yeah. Manufacture. Manufacture yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for that question. We got another one here. Uh, Supreme Rula question. Great to hear Ken is coming back. That's Ken Urquhart. When do you think that may happen? Janice, do we have an idea of when we're going to do uh, another interview with Ken? Uh, as soon as you and I can get to it, our schedule is a little backed up with, we've got some other interviews coming. that we've It'll be soon on. though. It'll be yes. soon. I right, thank you very much. We're glad you enjoy the interviews. Ken's got a lot of valuable information. Uh, next question here, also from Colta Huac Rivas. Question Did Karen study the Daytona Beach tape lectures of 1975 and the tech associated with it? What is it about and does she deliver that tech? I don't even know what that is. Do you know, uh, Karen? It's the new Vitality Rundown. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes I did all that. I did every course known to man or beast. Does yeah, I, I, that was a specialized rundown that they charged in a, the, at Flag, right? Was it a Flag only at, in Clearwater? Yes, it's a Flag only. Right. Yes, it's a Flag. It actually has a lot of R3R, which oh, Diana no Clear supposedly cannot do. Anyway, yes, did I study it? Quite like I studied every Everything. single thing <laughs> Hubbard did. You become a class 12 CS because you've studied yeah it all everything everything so yes yeah okay and Thanks i already answered do i deliver i already answered that previously yeah. <laughs> okay great thanks very much next question here is from x scientology question karen can you tell me where the la guardian's office was in late 1978 it was on the first lower level of an underground parking structure somewhere the door was very nondescript i met heber there no, Is that, that the complex? Have, that had to be in Cedars, no, right? No, that would have been the B1 office at the complex off the yeah. horseshoe. Yeah. The Los Angeles Guardian's office was in the manor where they had raided in 1977. The Guardian's office took up two floors of what Six is now seven. Celebrity Center. Huh? Uh -huh. Six and seven of the manor. Six and seven of the manor. And, Celebrity and Center. the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so, they had B1, which was investigations, and that was the high, highly confidential. That was over in the Blue Building, 
when you enter from, uh, oh, what's that one? Anyway, it's off Fountain and it's the horseshoe entrance that you can drive through. You go yeah. in those doors and go to the right where Incom was when I left, mm -hmm. but that used to be um, the investigation in Intel. B1 for the guy. They were involved. doing secret things like Snow White and stuff. So this was all right. super, super secret. Yes. And because they were infantri infiltrating government offices, they were doing everything illegal, a bunch of gangsters. Yeah. And slowly, once they raided, it all came out. Anyway, to answer the question precisely, the Los An Oh, I made a. Uh, you didn't ask United States Guardian Office, you asked Los Angeles Guardian Office. Yes. I, when we answered the question that it was a manner oh, that was yes. the continental the, of the whole of the United yeah. States, Jenny answered your question on the LAR, LA okay. Guardian Office. Okay. All right. Thanks for that question. We got we got some more technical questions here, Janice. This is from Martin Ottman, who, who used to be in the C organization, I think. A question for Karen. What are the special TRs that the Class 12 auditors supposedly use to audit the L's, according to the promo from FLAG? Oh, Martin, th there's a special technique where you... It's, it would be kind of hard to give you a class on special TRs in one sentence in a, in a thing. Can you email me and I'll send you... I'll email me at... Karen Delac, Karen, D-E-L-A-C, at gmail.com. I'll be happy to send you the reference there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks very much, Karen. Thanks, Martin, for that question. Next question is Japan of Green Gables. Question, did any of you know Nibs Hubbard personally, or had he left by the time you joined Scientology? If you knew him, what was he like? Did Ron ever talk about him? Uh, that was way before my time. How about you, Janice? I never met Nibs, but I heard of Nibs. Uh, I was in the uh, in uh, Hubbard's office when Mary Sue came in to uh, talk about Nibs because I think he had just done an interview with Penthouse. And so Mary Sue had come in with that. And then, of course, LRH told me to close the door. So he then had a private conversation with Mary Sue about Nibs. But that's how I first heard of him. Okay. How about you, Karen? You never met him, right? He was gone no, by then, right? No. Yeah. I do know that he was working with Paulette Cooper. Yeah. And he gave Paulette Cooper a lot of data. And yeah. then the cult gave him cash. And he flip flopped. One day he was Paulette Cooper's friend. The next day he was writing affidavits that everything he told previously was lies. He flip flopped back into the arms of the cult. Yeah. yeah, and actually Nibs worked very closely with Bent Corridon in writing his book, Madman mm. or Messiah. Yes. Uh, Bent worked with uh, Sarah Hubbard on that as well. Yes. And, and Nibs. Mm. And then Nibs got paid off on that one too to not be part of it. Okay. Thank you for that question. Next question here. Uh, again, Chiliak, uh, I'm going to get at some point, Revis. Uh, why did Pat Broker say on the LRH death event that he and Annie had notes to make the OTs 9 to 15 levels? Okay, uh, I got a picture. I'm going to show this here. Okay, that's Pat Broker holding up a worksheet from L. Ron Hubbard at that death event, right? And the point he was trying to make was that's a date. L. Ron Hubbard was dating something on the meter. And it, there's, those are all zeros. In other words, how many years ago something was. And he was trying to basically impress the fact that Hubbard was going way back on the time track. Okay. Um, I, I, my, uh, we'll go into this when on the Pat takeover, but basically Hubbard left, you know, all, he had all of his uh, auditing files and everything. He had filing cabinets full of just his PC folders, auditing folders on himself when he was on the go or on the run with Aunt Pat and Annie, okay? And that supposedly was where all the OT8, OT9, and the other o OT levels were. And uh, they had to get those back from Pat Broker before they could uh, basically take over RTC because they were concerned because Pat had them hidden. Anyway, that's a long story, but I was there when they actually received them. 
I got a phone call. I had to open up a, a, a vault room at the gold base and nobody was to know what was going on. And they wheeled in all these filing cabinets and I was the only person that had the lock and key to that special room. So anyway, they once they got that, then they could take get rid of uh, these guys because they thought, well, this has all of the information, right? But it was just Hubbard's auditing notes. It was nothing from my understanding where he laid out step by step, this is what you do. And that's why they've never been able to come up with anything. Do you have any information, Karen or, or Janice? Well, this is something I think we should discuss later on. So I don't want to go into what I know. Yeah. That's just a brief information that I have to whet your appetite for our next video. <laughs> Okay, thanks very much for that. Uh, Martin Ottman has another question for Karen. Were you aware that many of the top tech personnel at the FSO were chronically sick, were on medication and used auditing to have a temporary relief of pain in the early 1990s? Martin, I did hear from this. There was a, a girl called, not Greta, uh, not Greta. Oh. There was a girl who was a NOTS auditor who came out on Marty's blog who I became very friendly with. She was a NOTS auditor for years. She was formerly an RTC actual tech inspector. And I, she ended up as a NOTS auditor. And she did say many times that top tech personnel were, they were ill and they were on medication, just as you say. So you're, question is right on the nose you see martin they have techniques of finding out who's suppressing you for you to get ill but nobody nobody ever can say david miscavige is my a pts too you can't say that yeah. you can't you can't name your senior you can't name a good hat you can never really Get it off your chest who you feel is opposing you or punishing you. That's off limits. So in a way, although technology is supposed to let you be that it can get it off your chest, there are certain things you cannot say in auditing. And you cannot name a good hat. A good hat means a good person. Right. And say that that person is suppressing me. Can't do it. Okay. Thank you for the question, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Janice, don't don't star anymore. Okay, we're gonna go through the ones we have here because okay. we'll be here all night. It's already okay? it's one twenty. Yeah, I know. We've yeah. got some. We're gonna have finished answering. Uh, mm -hmm. This is from Theta Bob. Thank you so much, Theta Bob, for the uh, super chat. Uh, late to the chat, Karen. You are such a bright light. I didn't realize you were a class twelve CS. Do you think we uh, we will ever see Heber again? Oh, we hope so. Heber is in his twilight segment of his life. And he, you know, it's very interesting. I, I, I don't know that we'll, we'll ever see Heber again, but it's very interesting. They've never gotten Heber to say one bad word about me. And I have a channel with 12.7 million views and I've never said one negative word about Heber. I really have respected and, and there is nothing bad to say about him. It's not like, I, <laughs> or, <laughs> what's not to like. So I don't think we ever will. Thank you, Theta Bob, for asking that. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you very much for that. Okay, we'll go for the next one here. Uh, let's see. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, this is from, uh, I'm, I'm a uh, culture, IMDA culture. I love Sherlock. Do you, uh, do you think that Shelley's mentally and physically up to it after all these years offline? Up to what? I don't know. Is she mentally and physically up to it after all these years offline? You, you know, I, I would. Like, in other words, any, is she weak any, or is she? Any response would just have to be an assumption. Yeah. So I really, I don't want to answer that because I have to just assume. Okay. Next question here. Thank you for that. Uh, we got Martin Ottman again. Question for Karen. How many of the ELS auditors from the late 80s are still in? Do you know the current whereabouts of John and Peggy Eastman? 
John and Peggy Eastman are up at gold. John was busted off all tech lines and made into a truck driver, uh, a, a, sh- a driver, a, a bus driver. Wow. And he's been a bus driver for a lot of years. The Els auditors of the of the late 1980s slowly some of them passed away so-and-so died and so did you remember miriam lalu the girl who helped with the translation of dms image yeah. french girl she died of cancer and a couple of others were they just died off or if they're still alive they're in the 80s yeah they're in their older still, age yeah they're still being made to audit non-stop without a day off i always think of cows who are being milked endlessly with never a day off just they have to eat and produce milk in factory farming i think that the class 12s are factory farmed older marlon gelfin has been is now an fes if she's still alive marlon Marlon must be 92 93. um they they uh you know yeah, yeah. Well, and, when Stan- and look at me martin look at me i'm not <laughs> i'm not in that look at me i still go four miles a day healthy as a horse not a pain not an ache not a pimple not a i left the cult and got extreme health with the vitamins from peter Gillum's vitamin and my father. <laughs> there you go exercise vibrancy life and helping animals my passion is helping animals and animal abuse yeah okay thank you martin write to me let's become pen friends yeah absolutely x scientology question is karen ot8 i was sent the ot8 materials i did to my chagrin ot7 for years i was on the they call it on the level i truly i believe it all i no, but, but to answer your question, no, I did do OT8. However, I have all the OT8 materials set. They were sent to me. Did you know that OT8 has five different versions? Can you imagine Hubbard bringing out an OT level of yeah. <laughs> what happened is five different OT8s got together in a kind of party and they compared notes. Yeah. <gasps> Holy cow. They had <laughs> a different OT8 than the other person's OT8. Yeah, yeah, and, that's, and that's, then that's another story for a video. Well, yeah. The maiden voyage of the free winds and the release of OT8. Why don't Why don't you get me back just to get through what OT8? I, well, let's discuss it. Let's well, discuss we it. We have to have you back because there's says several subjects we need to keep discussing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks very much for that question. We've got another one here from Japan of Green Gables. What are the craziest Captain Bill Robertson uh, stories you have? Ooh, that's a video. That's a video. <laughs> yeah, Captain Bill's a video on his, on his own. One um, thing he did do, just to give it to you in quick two minutes, he would have, he was the commanding officer of AOLA. <laughs> and he would invite all the staff up onto the roof to look for what we call UFOs. And they were ordered ordered by Captain Bill to dress up in black ninja costume and go and raid psychiatrist offices and pull out the medical records. Yep, Uh, you know, those stories are, that story is in my book. Oh, yes, yes, my Chinese book. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, next question here. Thanks for that question. Uh, let's see here. This one I'm going to answer it's real quickly. Japan of Green Gables question. Saw in Freedom Magazine article, Marty's ex-wife said after he returned after having blown, he worked at some place called The Mill. What and where is The Mill? It's a furniture uh, where they make furniture. And the one in L.A. is in uh, in the complex at Cedars, uh, the hospital, the Big Blue. And basically, they mass produced furniture for Scientology organizations for David Miscavige's ideal orgs, you know. So that's what the mill is. Thanks for that question. Supreme Rula, question. Karen, 
Do you know what artworks Scientology's own, Scientology owns that are of note, real quality? I'm interested as I guess the public won't get to see them. Mm -mm. They don't, they, they paid Frank Frazetta right. and other artists to make paintings for Mission Earth. The reason is a heck of a lot of L. Ron Hubbard's personal cash, his millions, were invested in oil and the... <laughs> By and, Pat Broker and David Miscavige, and that's another story for another time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, these artists were paid just just to make images. They don't own artwork. Okay. Thank you for the question, Supreme Ruler. Okay, great. And then we're almost done here. Uh, let's see. This is a comment from Joel. McCoy, comment, Karen is the first person who I listen to. She is wonderful source of the truth and nothing but. Great to have her, great to have her here, Mark. Like your shirt, right, Janice? <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you, Joel. Joel. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you. <laughs> right, Joel. Next one, question, love, food kitchen question. Is Karen going to write a book? I'm absolutely fascinated about her life. We heard so much about her time in the church of Scientology and after, but it sounds like she's had an incredible life. You know, I'm not really a writer. So uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey maybe will write the book, but um, everything, every story I have, I put on YouTube. YouTube is really good. Long after you're dead and gone, I'm dead and gone. Those videos, Janice and Mark's videos, they're on there forever. I know certain people who are dead now, but they interviewed with me and their video is right there on my channel and on their channel. Right. So uh, anyway, your question was on book. I don't know that I'm a writer. I'm, I, Janice is the writer. Book exactly. three on the horizon. Look yeah, I was going to comment, Karen. I'm with you. I I uh, been asked many times, "Are you going to write a book?" And I, this YouTube channel is allowing me to tell my stories. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's it is it's me personally telling them where people can listen to them as a podcast or watch them on yeah. YouTube. And uh, I couldn't really go into more detail in a book. And plus, you know, so we're giving this out for free, basically, you know, people, people can listen to this. That's not to discount people who write books. You know, Janice has got tremendous detail in her books and great stories that we haven't talked about. And uh, you really get a feeling of what it was like on the flagship Apollo um, with yeah. Janice's books. So I yeah. encourage people to read them. But I, for me personally, I'm, I just plan on continuing doing the channel. Yeah, I, I know I have to finish book three, but I'll tell you. I enjoy doing the YouTube way more than sitting there at a, at a computer <laughs> typing and trying to, you know, <laughs> and get everything in sequence. I also want to tell you that with artificial intelligence, there are huge breakthroughs where dead people can talk to you. Did you know that you could go online and talk to Socrates? You could ask <laughs> Socrates questions. Colleges and universities, <laughs> dead people, they've like my voice can be captured and yeah, and then you can speak from the dead answering questions. They're using this more and more so. I'm I will you, remember you, that when I die. I will speak <laughs> from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Let me go. We got two left here. We've got a super chat from Veronica Bombria. Thank you so much, Veronica. Uh, I'm never in, but have been following for 30 plus years. Love to hear you all and your experiences. Is there anything you can recommend to help the elders out of there? I guess meaning the elderly. Help you know, get them out. There. Yeah, Mark and Claire did a whole thing on the elder abuse of the elderly that's in there. And I heard they have some uh, elderly homes set up in Los Angeles, which uh, I heard are not that great. I would love to see a reporter, you know, do some investigation into these elderly homes where, you know, old Sea Org members are, you know, gone. I mean, back in the day, that that was uh, what reporters did. You know, they investigated abuses 
And yeah. uh, you would think that like a nursing home or something like that, that's outside of the walls of, you know, the Church of Scientology, meaning meaning like not, a, you know, with security guards and things like that, that maybe they could get in there and talk to the workers or talk to somebody and find out what's really going on. I think that exposure would definitely help, you know. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then we got one more here. Uh, Michael Feldman, question, Karen, I greatly admire. <laughs> question? Well, there's no question. He's just. No, he's just saying he greatly admires oh. you. Michael, thank you. Thank you kindly. You're, you're so sweet. Thank you. Okay, that's all the questions for today. Karen, we want to thank you for being here. Before we go, we want to tell everybody, please subscribe to our channel. Slam or smack or whatever it is Jana says, that uh, subscribe button, the like button, the notification button. And uh, anybody who's new here, please, we've got about 35% of the people watching are new. So, you know, go ahead and subscribe. We've got some great content. We've got historical content that's still on our channel now that you may have missed, but you can always go back and watch it because Janice has got fantastic photos, many of which, or some of which, thanks to Karen, right, Janice? Yeah, yeah. Karen gave me a lot of photographs that she'd collected over the years. That's right, that's right. She helped hundreds me with- Hundreds and too. hundreds. Yes. Yeah. See old anyway. photos. Uh, also, Mark, can you just mention that my channel isn't called Karen De La Carrie, it's called Surviving Scientology. Okay, great, well then, Karen's got a channel, Surviving Scientology. Uh, you should subscribe and like and hit notifications for that as well. And you'll hear lots of great things from Karen. She has great interviews. Karen, you just did one with uh, Kate Bernstein recently. Yeah. You told me that, right? Yeah. 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 Anyway, and then also if you have questions that we didn't answer, uh, you go to the comment section for this video and please ask them in there. Janice and I look at those things I look at them four or five times a day and we will answer any question you've got. So just go to the comment section and you can ask away. Right. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Karen or Janice, before we go? I, I had a lot say, of fun. Thank you. Thank you. I just want everyone to know we will have Karen back. Absolutely. <laughs> so we got lots to talk being about. notified and you find out when. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jenny. Thank Karen, you. thanks very much. And tell Jeffrey thank you. And uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to take... We're going to play the exit video here, but please stay on, Karen, because we'll talk to you as soon as we get off the air, okay? Okay, sure. Okay. Thing. Hey, thanks very much, everybody. Bye. Hope you have a great weekend, a great Fourth of July in the United States. Thanks very much.